you know our history is the same i mean we've lived together for centuries and um, and we've been the same people you know with the same history same culture same stories same folk tales which same lullabies you know i mean i think <laughs> religion can never divide people you know, it religion is mm. used to divide pe- people india and pakistan when you hear these two names what comes to your mind is it the india pakistan cricket match or is it the multiple battles that we have fought together you know what comes to my mind our shared love for food for culture for art and our heritage welcome to being the change on epilog media i am rohan thakar and on this episode i'm here to talk about on how art can bring people together how art can break boundaries can break stereotypes and burn the hatchet to talk about it i have with me someone very special someone from karachi pakistan her name is shima karmani she is an ace classical dancer and a social activist you might have seen her in the super hit song pasuri by coke studio and that caught me to thinking what is a person doing indian classical dance in a pakistani song so to answer these questions i have with me shima ji thank you ron it is wonderful to be talking to you and uh, to be connected across the border <laughs> yes yes <laughs> finally yeah, yeah yeah so i've been very curious to know about uh, shima karmani uh primarily because she is a bharatnatyam exponent and uh, also learned uh, several other dance forms but what's very curious is that she has learned it in pakistan at a time when india and pakistan were not the same so how has it been the journey for you and how has it been that you chose bharatnatyam as a dance form to learn what was what were your roots before oh. all this began Okay well uh, Ron I actually do Bharatanatyam and Odissi as well oh, wow. you know I might have heard of the dance form Odissi yeah yes. and of course I do Kathak as well because I live in Pakistan so that's <laughs> the, that's the most out of all the yeah. classical dance styles that's the most accepted one in a sense mm-hmm. um yes yeah, so I think my exposure to Bharatanatyam actually came from my mother who uh, lived in hyderabad deccan and uh, so uh, she her family was living there when she got married and um, and so when we were young we would visit with her um, her, her family her parents go to hyderabad and and she would have an ustad coming to her house to teach bharatanatyam um and then she would um, make little drawings herself and bring them back and practice um at home here in pakistan back in pakistan so that was my actually first exposure in a sense to wow. uh, classical dance and to bharatanatyam she also used to learn uh, sitar in fact both my aunts my khalas were also learning mm. sitar when uh, and, and singing so i had this yeah. kind of an exposure at a young age from my mother's family side and then my guru here in pakistan uh, mr ganshyam um mm. yes so he was from he had been a student at almora of uday shankar's so yes, hmm. um, you know and, and this is pre uh, partition uh, pre partition so he had yeah. uh, himself um, studied with mr uh, with uday shankar ji and so he had um, this um, what he taught me was uh, like a bit of bharatanatyam bit of odissi bit of kathak the kind of uh, genre that uday shankar had created where you know he was reviving hmm. all these styles and uh, trying to create something um, uh, different so um, that that and i loved bharatanatyam when i was learning with mr ganshyam and then when i did yeah. go to india to study further i actually went to study bharatanatyam because i just uh, somehow it felt to me that that's the style i enjoy i like and in, i had an ear for carnatic music somehow i loved it and um, yes 
But then when I did get to India, uh, I, I did learn Bharatanatyam with uh, Leela Samson uh, at Sri Ram Bharatiya Kala Kendra, which is in Delhi. And then when I came back in between, I realized that I will not be able to take this very much forward because in Pakistan, there are no Karnatak musicians. Hmm. So I, I thought that oh, I'll always be only dancing to recorded music that I get from India and that's such a bore. And, and so when I went back to study dance further and I chose to do Odissi because Odissi can be danced on the tabla or even we have Pakhavaj hmm. players here and it's more North Indian in the musical hmm. uh, mm-hmm. sense. And so I did, um, so I did that. But at the same time, right. I was learning Kathak also with Ram Mohanji in Delhi. And uh, so I kept these three styles uh, going constantly. And which were, which year was this? So the first year was 1980. Um, it, uh, 83, the first time that I went. So from mm-hmm. 83 till, uh, um, uh, when I finally went for a th- uh, scholarship in 89. Uh, so I had this mm-hmm. ICCR scholarship, which I got in 89. And that's when I went for uh, a longer time, two years. And what was the perception for, uh, performance, uh, performance arts at that time? Well, in India, in Pakistan, <laughs> the relations between India and Pakistan. Yeah. I had been going to traveling to India in the um, uh, in the late seventies and um, the early eighties also quite a lot because I have a lot of family there and so mm. I used to go almost yes. every year, sometimes twice a year. Uh, but when I actually uh, went for a way and stayed for like you know at a go a whole year and then at a go for an hour. so that's I mean I always had an incredibly positive um, uh, uh, feedback relationship with all all, uh, all the people I ever met in India. Never did I have any negativity. In fact, when I would go to extend my visa or, or you know, to report, uh, there would be a real excitement. Oh, a woman from Pakistan is learning dance and learning uh, Bharatanatyam and learning Odissi. So there was a, a very nice feeling. Um, when I came back in um, um, in 19, um, uh, 1990 to Pakistan after having been there for some time, my friends said, "Let you know, we want to see what you've been learning." And by then, Pakistan had changed because by then this was that decade um, where the military di- of military dictatorship, mm. uh, which was very mm. Islamist. That was General Ziaul Haq's dictatorship. And he had Mm -hmm. tried to bring in all these very Islamic um, um, laws and a whole environment, which was very, very fundamentalist, basically, I would say. Mm -hmm. And so by the time I did get back, Pakistan had changed quite a lot and become very tough, very difficult for the arts, especially because uh, and for women. You know, because these were the two, uh, in a sense, the two um, victims of this uh, Islamization of fundamentalism. Yeah. So from then onwards, things did become very tough and difficult for for women and for artists um, in, 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 in Pakistan. Um, and that continued and it has continued because... Um, um, you know, uh, all that fundamentalism has kind of kept on increasing rather than decreasing mm-hmm. because the whole media and then a generation grew up with those ideas. And I feel that now things have really changed quite a lot. When I, but from the time that I was young in Pakistan, at that time it was a more freer, open, um, accepting, mm. liberal uh, country. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I often see uh, on uh, on social media, I get to, uh, you know, such images keep appearing about the before and after of uh, yeah. a lot of places. Like I see Afghanistan, Iran, yeah. Uh, yeah. in the early 70s, 80s, 60s, they used to be so modern. Absolutely. And Even Karachi, you know, the city where I live, yeah. it was like, I mean, like Mumbai. In that, and it was, yeah. you know, it was considered the twins. We were twin cities, Bombay and Karachi. Yes, and, yes, um, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and um, 
the environment, the atmosphere, and it was also the reason why it was so beautiful uh, was because of its diversity and its pluralism mm. and its multiculturalism. You know, and there was um, there was extreme diversity in this city, in specifically in the city of Karachi, because it was a port city. Mm-hmm. You know, it was connected to, yeah. and to an extent, believe me, it was known as for years. Um, it was known as the Beirut of uh, uh, hmm. of this part of the world of of the East, you know, wow. because it was so mm-hmm. modern. In Karachi, we used to have many Parsis, like in Bombay, we had many Christians. In Christians, we had all the all the different sects, and uh, we had uh, Goanese, and we had uh, uh, you know Portuguese, and, and their mm-hmm. music and their culture. And of course, we had the yeah. huge, a huge Hindu community, and we had so uh, it was a it was such a mix of people, and the mix was of mm. also of their cultures. And of course, we had the whole Bengali culture. Which then we lost in 1971, yeah. you know, which, which was a very yeah. bad thing because that Bengali culture mm. also gave us, a, 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 you know, a, a, the the aesthetics and the mm-hmm. a, and the music and the dance. I mean, in, at Ganjam yeah. School where I was studying, all, almost all the musicians were Bengalis. Mm. All the composers, mm. the music composers, were Bengalis because you know there was so much yeah. more of that in East. Uh, Pakistan, uh, which it was true, at that true. time till Bangladesh, and rather than in West Pakistan, so all of mm. this was um, this uh, history. Um, you know, yeah. it creates um, what we live in really uh, uh, at the present. And uh, yes, yes. I always talk about the, uh, the similarities that we have in our uh, in our history, in our culture, in our literature, for that matter. You know. Our stories, our our families. I mean, imagine I'm so yeah. connected with India. I talk on the phone with my friends and with my cousins or every weekend. Um, hmm. You know, um, yeah. But uh, unfortunately, for the last many years, we're not getting visas to get to India. Even this year, hmm. I mean, there's the I've come. Um, you know about Spic Mackey, this um, uh, convention youth. Uh, cultural convention that mm-hmm. happens. So I've come, I think, about three, three or four times uh, uh, with, with the delegation of students to speak Mackey. And um, this time it's happening in Madras at the um, uh, I- IIT in Madras. And but I don't think we will get visas, which is just so sad. Yeah. It brings me to a question. Hmm. What do you think? How, uh, like we discussed it earlier as well. Yeah. Art can bring people closer. Yes. But how do you think, how can it bring people closer? You know, I think it does. uh, Definitely. I think that's one arts are one element which really help people bond and connect. You know, Hmm. for instance, let me take the example of this song Pasuri. Yeah. Yeah. How amazingly it connected me to strangers in India. I mean, you know, out of the blue, somebody writes to me uh, that I am living in Bangalore and I heard this song and I, I saw this woman in a sari in a bindia. And how come this is in pa- you? Are you st- truly in Pakistan? Is this true that this is, you know? You know, that was one of the primary reasons why I got curious to speak to you about it. <laughs> there you are. Yeah. So it really, and so what is it? It's a music video. So it's a song, it's music, it's visuals and it's uh, uh, audio. And it connected me and it connected, I think, Pakistan mm. and so to the so many parts of the world. But let's, if we just talk about India, it was an, an incredible connection that happened between uh, between us and from small small towns in India people have uh, c- tried to connect with me and written to me yeah. so you see this is I mean we don't need to t- put it in words how it connects how it b- bonds you know it's it's a bonding thing and people say oh we felt so close and we could relate to you and and then then they find out that I'm also a dancer actually a classical dancer so they relate even more and there's a yeah I mean it really brought in such incredible energies and such beautiful connections and and this is what I mean that you know our history is the same I mean we've lived together yeah. for centuries and um, and we've been the Absolutely. same people you know with the same history same culture same stories same folk tales which 
fame, lullabies, yes. you know, I mean, actually, <laughs> religion can never divide people. You know, it, religion is mm. used to divide pe- people. That's what I say. On its yes. own, it doesn't divide because who cares what religion you practice mm. or what religion I practice or whether I do practice any religion or not, you know. Why should mm. you care? But uh, what are the other things that are connecting us? You know, it 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 is yes. that you sir, or see me dance that connects you. It is that you see me wearing a sari that uh, it connects. I mean, you know, the similarities that we have, and we if we nurture those, I think art through and those we nurture through art. No, I mean, the music, the song, the theater. I performed so often in India with our with my theater group. And wherever we've gone, it has really connected us, even you know, in a very deep way. Because what do you do with your art? You 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 talk. You um, manifest your aspirations, your de- dreams, your desires, and your sadness, and your hopes, and everything. And when the audience understands that, and you know, grasps it, and feels connected with it, so we we become one. We really become one, and I think that's how arts can do it. The only issue is once our states and our governments decide to o- allow artists to travel freely between the two mm. uh, countries, you know, that is what holds mm. us back. Otherwise, you know, I went on a I went on a tour um, of East Punjab. Mm-hmm. With a mm-hmm. wonderful mm-hmm. Uh, uh, social activist, his name was Satya Paulji, who has recently passed away. Yes. And we had an os- association, um, s- fraternity of South Asians for peace, or something like that. Mm? So he invited mm-hmm. us to do this tour of twelve towns or cities of East Punjab. Twelve mm-hmm. in in about fifteen mm-hmm. fifteen eight no, days, we did that. Tw- Twenty days till yeah. we reached Delhi and. And wherever we went, and it was a obviously the play that we brought was also ab- about um, this division that has been made between us, you know. And mm-hmm. it, it it was set. Uh, in fact, it was a play written by an Indian, um, um, Azgar Bajahat, and it's about it's set on the eve of partition, and and it is about a Hindu uh, lady who gets remain um, who's has refused to leave her home in Lahore um, mm-hmm. because she doesn't understand hey, what is this partition and why why does she have, have yes. to leave and she says she's not going and the people in Lahore nurture her as um, a, a loved neighbor that they've had and you know yeah. uh, and but then of course this this evil thing called fundamentalism finds its root mm. and um, you know she, Things like that. So it was, and that tour mm-hmm. we realized that you know all our hopes, all our aspirations are same. Whichever town you went to, people would ask, "Oh, you are? Is anybody here from Lahore? Is anybody here from that city?" And you know, I left my home there, and you know, because mm. it is the well, the tragedy of partition. I think will continue for for uh, and, uh, many generations to come. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, I feel that we are parts of the same coin. Absolutely. Just that yeah. Right. right. Divided by a ridge. But yeah. The rest, everything is the same. Bilkul. Bilkul. <laughs> of course, we are the same. I wanted to come to your group, Teri yeah. Ken Iswan. Yes. What has been this initiative about and okay. why does this exist? Right. So, uh, first, let me tell you what is Tariq. Uh, it, the the word is yes. Tariq and what is Nisma. Huh? So, Tariq is um, the Persian word for? Um, uh, movement, movement. Mm. You know, like a social movement uh, that takes place. Right. Yeah? Uh, and uh, nisma is women. So, mm. so that's Arabic word for w- women. So it's tariq in women's. So literally, it kind of translates into women's movement. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, I had thought of. Cre- uh, of creating this kind of a platform, um, when I realized that as a, I live in a very patriarchal society, and as a woman, I found that patriarchy is so oppressive. And as an artist, I found it, found it even more oppressive. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, a, a woman and, a, and an artist, and I felt that 
wherever i went uh, there was uh, there were women who were who would be writing poetry there were women who were artists but they never got a platform to project their creativity you know because every way it was so male dominated with whether it's the whether it's the arts councils or whether it's uh, any other platform they were all heavily male dominated and women would feel very um you know uh, that they uh, too scared to come out and speak out in the open then also because i have i uh, because of my politics which is kind of left wing politics and i was trying to work with women of the working class you know in the women who go to factories and warehouses to do their jobs fisheries and things there i felt that there, there were trade unions but they were totally male dominated you know and if i if a woman wanted to speak up she was she'd be too scared so i just felt that this i need to create this platform where I, women can be nurtured and trained right. to uh, to be self confident and to find the dignity in their bodies and in themselves to speak out and assert themselves so this was the initial um um uh, reason for creating this platform and while doing all of this work i realized that the way that the times that i would connect with my audience which is a working class female audience mm-hmm. or even the male audience the minute I, the yeah. the time i would connect with them would be when i was performing something more than speechifying mm. and giving lectures and talks because you know we don't have there's not that kind of literacy in this country that everybody can sit and listen to a paper being read out and things like that so but when it's the sto- when it's storytelling when it's a performance and you're singing and you're dancing and you're showing characters that people can relate to that had such power and magic and i understood that performing arts was one way to hmm. actually uh, carry forward um rights messages rights human rights hmm. women's rights mm-hmm. uh, marginalized people. and so i decided that let's do that let's make tehreek e niswa a cultural hmm. group and so that yeah. is what we did we made it into a cultural group and um, hmm. so we use all forms of um, cultural activity where well, you know the dastan goi kissa kahani um, singing music dance theater dialogue poetry and um, mm. we kind of you know and this is also interesting because for us it's a way to um, uh, to preserve and carry forward our traditional uh, arts as well yeah. you know which, mm. which are mm. so easily get wiped off because you know um, because there's the, um, you know how the state represses folk music and folk arts and even so you know so we can connect with them and mm. we use we bring in folk artists also and we try to connect with them and then we try to preserve uh, musical yeah. instruments music, musical genres and things like that So basically we become a performing arts group now uh, for the last 50 years almost we work as a performing arts group but um our lens are basically first i would say they are feminist because we mm-hmm. that is our uh, prime um, yeah. motive that uh, to create feminist equality to create gender equality and then of course we also have this um political lens where we look at things uh, um that you um uh, to raise uh, the hmm. political consciousness of the working class the peasants and to connect with them so that we are not we are not elitist we are not talking about just hmm. a certain section of society we are talking about hmm. masses and i i think yeah. uh, another thing that i could point out here is that something that i've always been my concern is that ordinary people must have access to these art forms yeah. which you know in our countries like ours where there's such so much poverty and such um parity between the different classes uh, hmm. uh, 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 uh though i feel it is less in that sense in india that when i would go to a music concert and come back in a bus there would be lots of other uh, people from the audience coming back in the mm-hmm. bus yeah, yeah. but in mm-hmm. pakistan the um, and the audience that would go to a music concert would never travel in a bus they would all be mm. you know because we don't have that um, uh, facility in a sense uh, and it maybe the you know 
it's maybe uh, it's it's you know the classes would be defined in another way mm. the way uh, mm -hmm. it functions the society functions but i feel that ordinary people must have access to these arts why should they not so what we did through tarik and isma and that i would like to share with you all is that what, um, what something like what a friend in uh, india uh, safdar hashmi used to do take theater to the people you know so we we that's a, we, that's what we also do we call it our mobile theater so we don't call it street theater uh, because actually in in dictatorships you can't literally, you can't literally go and provide on uh, perform on the streets yeah, but like nukkar natak uh, ha ha bilkul nukkar natak i think yeah. that is what then we started doing and we do mm. a lot of that in fact our focus is on, is on that and every month we are performing somewhere or the other mm. and so in communities um uh, in uh, in low income areas you know we go mm. to the fishing village and we would perform there and we'd go to small villages small towns or even the slums uh, the in and around mm. karachi and all over pakistan so hmm. we made uh, we called it our mobile theater tarik in isma mobile theater and we make ourselves mobile we go to those people who cannot hmm. come to us to do not come to watch theater or listen to dance and music and things like that and this has been an amazing experience because hmm. um, through this we are also connecting with yeah. the ordinary people of the country you know and hmm. and so we are Uh, so our stories emerge from them i mean we take them one story we get they watch it then they give us their feedback then they start talking mm. we have after every performance we have a dialogue so it's not only okay. that we are going to perform our aim is to create a dialogue you know yeah. like when we are talking it's... the purpose of these arts in terms of bonding people or whether it is across borders or it is within uh, your own mm. uh, country situation so we are bonding and that's what the purpose is, is of uh, uh, and um, that has really been an amazing uh, uh, thing and that is what is led to us to be able to do this incredible thing called aurat march which we started 8 years ago that we you know women would come out on the streets and talk about their rights and their demands and so it's all because you know of all these years of work in different localities different areas that one has created this environment that women now feel that they can talk about themselves and about their issues and how is it perceived by the other group that uh, for them like for them this activity is been initiated like uh, they are the they are the ones who need to hear this so how do they perceive do they perceive with an acceptance level of acceptance or is it with retort or is it with sarcasm how is it like so i would uh, say honestly it's both it's a bit of a bit of both i mean on the one hand we obviously get a huge amount of um um fr friendship and uh, positivity and uh, uh, connections you know when women hear their story and they feel oh this is our my story um there's obviously a lot of um, um solidarity that emerges um but yes of course there are people who are against us who find this obje uh, objectionable and um um but but you must realize that who are these people who find, who are against us they are those who want to maintain the oppressive status quo they don't want this change i mean they are the ones who want to keep the patriarchy going because it serves their interest and so it's very easy to target us and to divide women by saying oh these these women they are you know, western oriented that's one way they target us which is not so we are very traditional women and we we uh, some of us may be educated in the west but that does not make us western women you know uh, um, in fact i think a lot of women people students even i i see in the, even if you take the example of students in india when you know when you get go to the west to start, you start understanding and appreciate the appreciation of your own culture so much more because you feel that you need that identity 
identification, you know. Yeah. So there is an appreciation that comes. So, I mean, I don't take that criticism at all. I feel that that's a very ridiculous um, criticism. Um, the other way the, to uh, criticize us the, is the easiest way is to say that this uh, all of these ideas are against our traditions and against our religion. You know, so, you know, as I said earlier, religions have are used all, everywhere, always to divide people, to create, unfortunately, used to create hatreds between people rather than create uh, love and uh, understanding. So, yes, so as I said, so there have been, there are obviously people who are against us, who, who then try to put obstacles in our way. I mean, initially it was the state and the government. They would say, oh, you can't, you're not allowed to go. You need a perm uh, permissions. You go to the police office, get the permission. You go to the commissioner's office. You know, those kind of bureaucratic hurdles. Uh, now that is definitely much less. I mean, you know, since, since, since the military dictatorships have ended, that has uh, also become easier in that sense for us. There's more openness. But then people have become so uh, fundamentalist now because all these years, have, um, the, the ideas have seeped into people and they, they can turn around and say, oh, um, uh, why are the women not wearing uh, an orni? Why are they not wearing a chada? Why are they not wearing a dupatta? Whatever. You know, all sorts of things. So one has to fight it struggle at many levels and on many yeah. fronts <laughs> what about the younger generation they are very open they are very much exposed to the world much more than the previous generation yeah. where uh, of course thanks to the internet the gen z's are born with it yes uh, what yes, has yes. been your experience um, working with them or uh, yeah. you know their outlook towards uh, communities so generally, I find uh, that there, there's a uh, the young, younger gen generation is wonderful to work with, but at the same time, I would um, say that our uh, the uh, uh, you know our education system has been totally destroyed. So hmm. in the younger generation uh, that has that is now like uh, for instance those who are now fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. There's no, or one can't say no, but there's very little of mm -hmm. uh, uh, of um, holistic education. You know, there's mm. people haven't read, read literature, people haven't mm. seen art films. Uh, these kids, they 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 just got their um, TikToks and their um, you know gadgets, and mm. their aim. And they're very materialist because life mm. is so now in Pakistan. It's a very, um, you know, um, our, um, uh, it's actually the fabric of society has been quite destroyed and the economics are shattered. Mm. Prices are soaring. People, you know, people literally, even people like us, yeah. I, I mean, uh, the kind of food I could put on my table, I think, Twice before I go and buy fruits and nuts or things because they're so exorbitant, you know. So uh, these young kids, their interest is let's find a job in Dubai, let's get a scholarship to Europe, let, you know, they're, and they're constantly doing that. They're trying to get away, um, and so there's lack of interest in your own history or your own culture because you're so fed up with life in this country. And then for girls, especially, they're so fed up of being told that this is how you must dress and this is you, this is what you must not do. And how, why are you looking at a boy? And why are you dancing? And why are you singing? And, you know, the, it is it is extremely oppressive. So I understand that the young generation's desire is to, if, I, if you go to the university and ask the students, how many, what, what is your aim in life at this moment? Uh, all the hands that will be put up is we want to leave the country. We want to get out. We want to go abroad. You know, it's, it's becoming difficult to handle home. Yeah. So it's quite sad. But uh, of course, that doesn't mean that there are there's nobody who uh, is interested or, you know, I'm talking about. Um, both the pictures, both sides of the coin, there are young people, but there are very, very few, those who would take up classical music, for instance. 
very, very few. I used to have more students in my dance class 20 years ago than I have today. You know, because today there's the, the value of classical dance or classical music is not there in the minds of the yeah. either the mm. parents of that generation or the younger kids of, uh, of mm. this generation. Yeah. Also, a lot of westernization has happened. Uh, mm. So their affinity towards absolutely. Western music or Western dance has also increased. Right. You're right, absolutely. Uh, and we absolutely. see this in in this part of the world as I'm well. Sure you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. When I'm invited to um, a, a, some educational institute, for instance, a school, because we, you know, it's an annual event. I, we want you to be our chief guest or something like that, and I go mm. happily to see what what they're doing, and. Believe me, I've mm. almost never, maybe once or twice, but I've almost never seen them produce on stage uh, 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 a play or a, a performance related mm. to our history or our literature. It's always mm. uh, the Sleeping Beauty or, uh, you know, and mm. uh, that's so sad because we have so much. It's not that we don't have, mm. um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, literature uh, of our own that sh yeah. that should be brought to the young generation hmm. uh, we were also, having this and yeah. also we are we copy a lot of uh, bollywood you know i mean so <laughs> they would say oh ma'am shima you must come we 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 we, 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 I, we taught our student dance and i say oh my god what are we go oh, what am i going to do? And obviously <laughs> what i go and see is that they are dancing on some bollywood song hmm. you know and trying to make the moves that yeah, you see on my the Bollywood. movies. Yeah, 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 movies. yeah. 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 I, I was mentioning to you earlier that uh, we had a conversation on a podcast, Rangmanch, uh, which is hosted by mm -hmm. Padmashri Bhavana Somaya. We had the son of Sashi Kapoor, uh, late Sashi Kapoor on the show, Kunal Kapoor. He is uh -huh. the one who runs Prithvi Theatre in Bombay. Oh, which he is, runs it now. Yes, yes. Uh, we had a very interesting conversation where he said that when India got partitioned or India gained its freedom, uh, the focus was entirely on science and the progress. Uh, yeah. Somehow the arts got sidelined and uh, mm -hmm. we see the repercussions today where the old uh, traditions and the art, the culture, somehow it got yeah. lost in, this, in the time. And yeah. I think uh, actions like these, uh, it can rekindle that love for uh, the art. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, if if somebody can say that of India, you can imagine it yeah. that much more percent of it for mm. Pakistan, you know, mm. because in mm. India you still had somebody like Maulana Azad who actually said to Nehru set up these cultural centers. The ICCRs mm. were initiated mm. by Maulana Azad because yeah. he was such a literary man, and you know they were. They were, uh, he was a religious scholar, but much appreciation mm. of the arts, like so many mm. others uh, of that time. And, but yeah. here we didn't have that at all. In fact, here it, we had this added issue that, um, mm. to, to uh, come out as different from India, uh, mm. an arts was totally kind of banished. From our mm -hmm. cultural landscape, you know, because, oh, there, you know, in India, it was still, there was still classical music and there was still, you still had sitarists and dancers and all of that. But in, initially yeah. in Pakistan, it was totally banished. Uh, I was just saying, and somebody like Bade Goram Ali Khan, who came to Pakistan, who, who was born in this part of the world. So he came uh, in 47, he came to Pakistan and said, oh, I'm so happy that now I can live in my own town and in my own vatan and um, uh, went back because he realized that he can't. I mean, Radio Pakistan was not allowing him to do, uh, to sing what he wanted to sing. So you have that. Then even somebody like Kurutula and Heather, such a incredibly great Urdu writer came to Pakistan and went back. She actually wrote to Nehru to get special permission to come back because she just realized that Pakistan is a cultural desert at that point. That is what it hmm. was. It was a total cultural desert. Hmm. Yeah. It brings me to a question uh, that, of course, science is important. Progress is important. Technology is important. Economic stability is also important. But what does art give a person that everything else cannot you know i think basically what why art is important is because it 
opens up our imagination. Hmm. It allows us to fly as high as we want to fly. Hmm. For women, I think arts are important. Um, I, and there are many ways that I find arts are important. For women, arts are important. For instance, um, you know, it is through dance that I fi- uh, found this confidence in my body, the dignity in my body. Hmm. Um, I think arts are also, also important because they bring you your identity. Um, uh, they, uh, they give you that self-confidence, that um, uh, strength. For me, uh, arts has been something that's given me so much strength. I mean, you know, um, that I feel I can do anything. <laughs> you know, it gives you courage, basically. Makes you strong. And um, and then, of course, um, through art, because arts touches you, art, you know, performance art touches you in so many different ways. Touches you uh, at a deep emotional level. Touches you at a intellectual level. Touches you at a visual level, at an audio level, at a, almost at a sensual level. So I feel that it is one of the things which is the most holistic way to get across to uh, to somebody. You know, you don't necessarily have to talk, but you do a certain movement, and that person understands that you're talking about love, or you give a certain abhinaya look, and you know mm, that person angry. does not. You know, <laughs> well, yeah. So I mean, I think it is so mm. powerful, and it creates that power in mm. you. So I would say it kind of empowers me. Yeah. Mm. That's why it's important for me. There's a question that has been knocking me for a while now. Uh, you yeah. earlier mentioned that you have uh, practiced three different forms of dance, Bharatnatyam, yes. Kathak, yeah. Odissi as well. Uh, yeah. Mastering one itself takes a lifetime. How did you sure. manage to sure. no. do three well, of them? Let me be very honest. No, I haven't mastered any one, even one of these forms. I haven't mastered them. But because, the, you know, I looked at it in this way that I live in Pakistan hmm. where none of these forms really exist. Hmm. And I mean, if I am doing Bharatanatyam, people say, oh, this is not Pakistani. Hmm. If I'm doing Odissi, they'll say, oh, this is not Pakistani culture. Hmm. If I'm doing Kathak, they'll say, oh, this is Mujra culture. This is the, this is what the, pros- uh, you know, mm-hmm. um, uh, red white women do. Mm-hmm. What do you, what is all of this? So I have learned these different forms hmm. in, 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 in with, with this view or with this understanding or with this uh, feel knowledge that I have to create my own form. Mm. I don't have to be a master. I mean, of course, if I was living in India, I would have tried to master one of these forms. And as you said, no, you, it takes a lifetime to master any even one. No? But that was not my purpose. Mm. I tried to learn as much as I could of the form. And now I want to create something mm. which people here will find relevant because mm. I feel that it's for me, it was not about preserving these forms. For me, it was that was not my interest because mm. this is uh, my interest was to learn something and create something which is relevant to mm. my people, yeah. to me and to my society. And so these forms helped me with that. You know, I I use Urdu poetry because, you know, as you know, there's a lot of poetry in Urdu. Mm. I don't uh, um, uh, do Sanskrit poetry. I don't do uh, uh, only bhajans. I don't mm. do only kirtans. I do them when I want to. And mm. there are occasions to do that as well. But my purpose is to bring the art form of dance to the people, mm. the classical form. And make them understand that this is also an art form. Dance is not something that you can thrash. Yeah. You know, and say okay, it's hopeless, it's useless, it's exhibitionism mm. of the body and it's for male titillation. No. You know, so my so my purpose of learning these different forms. In fact, I even learned a bit of Kathakali wow. because I think it gives me mm. an added yes, mm. because I'm creating stories. Mm. Uh, I'm telling stories. And to tell story, if I want to use a Bharatana, a, 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 a Kathakali movement, it's brilliant. And if I want to use a very soft movement, I can bring in a Mohindi Atam movement, which I also did a workshop in, you know. So I feel that, yes, I mean, let's be holistic and let us be more creative. Mm. That's wonderful. And you also received an award recently for the same to 
give bring this yes, awareness awareness in the people right. of pakistan so i would love to yes, know a little yes. bit more about it you received a pres- presidential award for this Yes, yes, yes. So for the first time in all these 75, 76 years of Pakistan, the first time there has been an award in appreciation of the art of dance. So for me, it is not an award that, that I feel that uh, it is for me. I feel it is for the fact that we have finally recognized that this is also a subject and this is also an art form. So that's why I'm very proud that it came through me. But the fact because we have been in denial of it always, huh? I mean, I, from the beginning, Pakistan has been in denial of uh, ad- assuming and adopting the, uh, dan- uh, the uh, dance as part of its cultural. They said, no, no, no. Because, you know, we've always tried to identify with the Arab culture. We said, no, 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 the, the Indian culture is, we will not identify with. Why? Because it is, uh, it is uh, related to Hinduism. We have to identify with another culture which is related to our religion. But cultures are not about religions. You know, cultures are about so many other things. You know, about language, about life, about style, about food, landscape, geography, climate, hundreds of things. You know, customs, traditions, stories, literature. So um, I, I've never understood how people can define art and culture through religion. And I've always... said okay, well how can you know when the for instance let when let's talk a little about this peace issue when this whole thing started i mean we've always been at war with each other right mm-hmm. right from the beginning in india and pakistan uh, and then this nuclearization started right yes. and then at that point when they said oh we this is, pakistan has made the bomb so this is the first islamic bomb mm. and then of course there was the hindu bomb <laughs> yes. which you have made so i mean and i used to think even at that time but the islamic bomb will it not affect the mm. muslims who are living in a certain area is it going to choose the non muslims to destroy them and kill them or vice versa will the hindu bomb only choose to kill muslims how can you define these things you know in this way through religion so i totally oppose uh, this these kind of definitions and i'm very anti dividing art and culture on religious uh, lines It's wonderful it just goes to show that art brings people together irrespective of where you are placed absolutely. what your thinking is absolutely it's about bringing yeah. a oneness in our society and culture and bring cultures together and i think this episode and to create make us better human beings absolutely right? to make us better human beings absolutely yeah. and i feel this episode has been a testament of uh, talking about uh, what culture can do to one and how we can bring uh, people together and for that thank you so much shima ji for taking out the time and uh, talking with with us here in india thank you thank you for uh, uh, inviting me to speak to you and to through you to, to so many others in india and i would just say that uh, uh, my last uh, uh, th- thoughts would be that kaash ke hum ek ho jaye ek tarah se kam as kam mil le ek dusre se get we that we can meet each other we can connect with each other we can share with each other because i sincerely feel that we are one and the mm. same mm. and um, uh, and i do hope that these enmities these hatreds that have been created between us mm. ke wo khatam ho jaye you know taake pyar ke sath hum log rahe mil kar ke Do you think art is capable to break and defeat the purpose of war? Is it capable to bring people together? If yes, do let me know your thoughts. This is being the change. I am Rohan Thakkar and will keep coming back with more such insightful episodes. Uh till then, make sure you are subscribed to us so that you get notified when we come next. Till then, goodbye.